something here. Actually, I just clicked. So, does that work? We're set. We may both. Be. All right, sweet. Um, so, yes, welcome. We're talking about Visual Studio's antimony. So, I'm going to give you a background, um, and then we have people on Zoom to tell you more details about uh, other things, about like actual details about things. This is just sort of the introduction. So, okay. So SVML is an XML based is XML based and it's designed to be exchanged by computers. Um, so you wouldn't want to use an editor for SVML directly. Antimony is a human readable and human writable sort of front end for SVML. So what that looks like is it is a text based list of commands um, that tells you about what what your model is. So up here at the top, we have a reaction J0 is the name of your reaction. S1 goes to S2 at a particular reaction rate. S2 goes to S3 at a particular reaction rate. These are all my initialization values. So this then gets translated to SVML, and the SVML is that, um, which obviously you wouldn't want to look at by hand because that's awkward. Um, Antimony was first developed in 2008 um, when I first started working for Herbert um, as a successor to uh, his, his Jarnak command uh, program. So Jarnak both let you create models and analyze them. Um, and Antimony was just going to be the sort of the model creation thing. And it was also designed to be modular. So you could say, define a few reactions in one module and then pull them in in a second reaction. And maybe you have sort of a general format for a model, for a, a submodel, and maybe you pull it in a few times um, and then connect it up differently. Um, this ultimately led to the creation of the hierarchical model composition SVML package uh, for, for SVML level three, um, which I was involved with as well. Um, and then Antimony itself and its modularity was eventually incorporated into Tellurium's sort of Python ecosystem. So if you want to create an antimony model, um, QT antimony was something I developed again back in 2009, 2010, something around there. And it would just give you tab, one tab that was antimony and another tab that was SVML. So it looks something like this. So like on the left, you would have your model that was, uh, that was your antimony model. And then you would click on the SVML tab and then you could see this. And you could go back and forth uh, if you wanted to load up your SVML model, you could you could look you could then look at it in in, in the antimony version, et cetera. And you can edit either one, and it would update the other. Um, in Python, uh, the antimony model is just an undifferentiated string. So, like typically, you use the Python versions where you have like three quotes, and then just your your antimony model, and then three quotes, and it's the end. So that's convenient for when you are creating something and you're doing a Python script, but it doesn't give you any help in the IDE. Like all it, like if you look, and I think I have this next, yeah. So this is spider um, and that's too small, but basically this bit here is your antimony string and it's just all green, right? Um, Python doesn't know anything about antimony. All it knows in this context is that it is a string. It's, it's nice. This is we import Tellurium, load the model, and then simulate the plot it, and then it shows you the plot over here. So it's nice and convenient, but it doesn't give you sort of extra help um, in the in the antimony creation. So Visual Studio's antimony is an actual antimony IDE. And I don't know, you can't see the syntax highlighting all that great, but there's syntax highlighting now. Um, so this is again, the same model that I've been showing you in other times, but now suddenly we know that like J0 and J1 are like the reaction names and the arrow is highlighted as a reaction sort of thing. Um, math is highlighted differently from other, other stuff. And your values are actually a different color, although it's a little hard to see on that screen um, for your list. Um, and so that is the basic introduction. Yeah, what? Um, so sure, Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio obviously is the Windows editor for um, creating programs. 
um, and Visual Studio's editor uh, is something that they've sort of bundled up separately. If you just want to edit, um, if, if you want to edit code, basically, and typically that means Python or yeah. I'm still trying to work on. Oh, the lights. Yeah, there we go. Um, and and they and they have provided uh, tools for people to write uh, language extensions. So, so if you if you have a particular language and you want your Visual Studio to you want your editor to be able to read a particular uh, that your domain specific language, then you can do that. Ooh, you all just appeared. We're no longer back. Wait, what? And it's cross platform. Yeah. All right, that is my brief introduction. Are there any other any questions about that? Basic, yeah. Yes, it will be able to like to translate it to and from to SVML and yeah and yeah yeah like large sbml files are great to look at enhancement because they condense a lot <laughs> right um so yeah lucian if when you get questions could you repeat them for us we can't really hear the oh, question okay. sorry I, there is a microphone but apparently it's like super great uh what is the work practically like you have a separate file which is a certain extension and then mm. you register before that's the time of that one like how did that work to create it in general um yeah so this i should probably let other people talk but <laughs> but basically yes um we registered the dot ant extension um for antimony you can go in if you load visual studio you can like say like look give me the extension and there's two different extensions one is for the syntax highlighting and one is for the semantic error checking and and uh that sort of thing just, uh, right so then then if you go back you can either you can either copy and paste out of visual studios code and into your python script or save it as a file and load that file um with with your load a thing into learning inverse or whatever else you like just also point out because uh, you can load in the python extension as well and you can run the simulator on the visual studio called wildcard you can sim do simulations and yeah. oh, in general, like we, this doesn't do it yet. Oh, you've run. Okay. All right. Is, uh, did, have you had the antimony ID while you were simulating? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think you can't quite do that yet, but. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is I mean, as, as my part first example thing, I just had the, the, bare model without the model wrapping um but yeah it does the it does the model wrapping stuff okay uh, should, should we go on to uh, aldrich yeah <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay all right i will and so what we're going to do now is that the team that's been working on vs code antimony is going to first of all give you a, a introduction a more detailed level of the features and then go on to some of the more innovative new features that are being developed uh, uh, as well. So you get more of a feeling about current state and directions. All right, here, let me. Right, should I get started? Here, just a second. Let me. Sure, you want to? Yeah. I... Let's see if we can get you uh, audio a little better on a different machine. All right. It's actually not. Terrible when everyone's quiet. <laughs> but Is everybody hearing everything? Reasonably. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to switch? Yeah, sure.
someone talk in Zoom? Hello? Yeah, I, um, hi, Matthias. We seem, yeah, we lost Lucy, and I assume he's switching machines. Yeah, okay. uh, go, go ahead with the presentation, can we hear you? Yeah, okay, great. Okay, Aldrich. Uh, all right, um, thanks for Lucien's introduction. Um, so today, uh, me and Eva and Anish will be presenting uh, a brief introduction about me. I'm a student at University of Washington uh, studying mathematics and Eva. Hi, my name is Eva Liu. I'm currently a junior in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Washington. Hello, I'm Anish, and I'm also a junior at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Washington. This project is led by Steve Ma and Dr. Joseph L. Hellerstein, and is worked on collaboration with Usab Shin, Lucian Smith, and Dr. Herbert M. Saro. So an introduction to VS Code Antimony. As mentioned earlier, VS Code Antimony is an extension that's present in VS Code, which allows modelers to build biological models using the Antimony language within VS Code. And it provides a variety of features that allow for a more convenient experience while developing these models. To install this extension, a user can just look up VS Code Antimony on Google, and it will provide a link to the VS Code marketplace. When you click on the link, it will show this web page right here, which will let you install VS Code and Timony onto your VS Code. More on the features soon. So here's a list of features that we have on VS Code and Timony. So the first one is syntax recognition and highlight, which displays different colors according to the category of keyword used. Hover messages, which provide text information about a symbol when hovering over that symbol. Error detection, which does real-time color analysis and detects and displays errors or warnings in the file through visual indications. Model navigation, which allows the modeler to navigate to the location in the file where the variable is initialized. Annotation creation, which allows the modeler to create an annotation quickly and easily for a symbol without the need for a browser. Converter between SBML and Antimony, which lets a modeler convert between SBML and Antimony as needed and Antimony or SBML preview, which lets a modeler preview an Antimony file in SBML and vice versa. And these are the current features of Antimony. And the next few features are actually gonna be features that will be introduced in the next version of VS Code Antimony, which will be released sometime around end of November to beginning of December. So we have type sensitive annotation creation and annotation recommender, which build on top of the annotation creation feature we had by allowing the modeler to create annotations based on the symbol type. So it can recognize like a reaction or a species. And it also provides a modeler with a more sophisticated list of annotations. Automatic rate law insertion, which allows the modeler to insert suitable rate loss for reactions quickly and easily. And finally, model import, which lets a modeler import models into a file and use them as needed. Hey, um, so the first uh, feature that we introduced is syntax uh, recognition and highlights. Uh, syntax highlights in programming has been shown to reduce the time for programmers to internalize the semantics of programs. The, extent, uh, the extension can recognize different syntax in antimony by sending those into our backend parser and highlight keyword in different colors. For example, the word speech species uh, in here, species and uh, initialization are highlighted in orange. Compartments are highlighted in purple and relationship, whether it is in compartments, um, mathematical relationships like plus and minus or arrows in a uh, reaction are all highlighted in uh, bluish green color. Syntax highlights will also render automatically when you are typing. 
We also support hover messages. When hovering over a symbol, uh, detailed information about the, about the variable will be displayed in a pop-up format. The hover message will include the variable type, the display name, uh, the initialized value, uh, the compartment it is in, and anno any annotation related to the symbol. Here's an example of the hover messages. It also highlights so that you can grasp the important information at a glance. Uh, the extension also supports various warning and error detections to help models do, um, during the development. Our design principle for whether an issue should be a warning or an error entirely depends on the logic of Tellurian. For, for example, typo can be extremely common during development, and this feature will come in handy in that situation. Our extension will mark the subject as an error if Tellurian throws an error while rendering the model with a red underline. An example would be calling a function that does not exist. The demo here is a typo where the function quadratic is initialized, but quadratics with an extra s is called at the end. On the other hand, certain issues are not errors in Tellurian, but we thought it would be worthwhile to have the user's attention. For example, missing initial values for species and overriding a previously defined vac, uh, value. Here is an example of the species S1 and S2 missing initial value. These issues are marked using only yellow curly on the lines. And as you may notice, the error detection also has also have messages uh, indicating which error or issue it is. We also support some features in the right-click menu. Here's an example of the model navigation. Model navigation allows user to go to the line where a variable is initialized. Here, when user clicks on the reaction and selects go to definition, the extension will be bring the user to the description of that re reaction. While antimony is a convenient way for models to make bio models, we realized that users would still prefer it to be converted to SBML files frequently. So we have built a converter between antimony and SBML file inside the VS Code antimony extension. When user wants to e export an antimony file as SBML or export an SBML file as antimony, simply select a variable and then select convert to SBML or convert to antimony. Then a window will pop up and ask user to select an export location. But before converting to SBML or antimony, you might want to preview it before exporting. We developed this, this preview feature to allow user to view and edit antimony files in SBML and that's BML files in antimony. The button to enable preview is at the top right corner of the VS Code window. As shown in the demo here, uh, right here. In addition to read-only preview, we support editing on both sides of the file and allow rendering on a simple quick action by clicking Control S. Uh, the annotation creation feature in VS Code Antimony aims to improve the experience and efficiency of model developers when it comes to creating annotations. With VS Code Antimony, developers no longer have to switch between the editor and the web browser, where they search for the unique identifier for their annotation. VS Code Antimony allows the users to insert annotations from various sources with just a few clicks. We currently support querying annotations from Kebi and Unimport. 
in the next release of VS Code Antimony scheduled in December, will support even more. We'll expect, we will append the database list based on the OMEX metadata specification. And by next release, uh, VS Code Antimony will have nine databases in total to query from. Because we have supported so many databases, users might find it hard to locate the database uh, they want. So in addition to that, we have also supported type sensitive. When user tries to create annotation for different types of variables, the extension will recognize its type, whether it is species, compartment, or reaction. Then recommend databases that fit the simple type. The recommended databases are marked with a star at the end of their names. Hover messages for annotation is also a big part of the user experience. Hurry over an annotated symbol will bring up the link of annotation and a brief of the annotation. For reactions, the reaction formula is shown under the annotation link. And for all other annotations, such as species and compartments, the name and the description are displayed. Uh, for more features on Antimony, uh, here's Eva. Before delving into our new features, I wish to preface that what we showcase are only examples, and we want modelers to keep in mind not to take these examples as literal. We don't recommend duplicating our exact choices or actions during our showcase when modeling. In addition to the past implemented features, we support even more. Previously, the only user experience of creating annotation for a species is to select a database, which then displays a list of annotations from that database. Now we have developed a new feature designed to make the process of choosing annotations for a species easier and more intuitive. The feature automatically sorts annotations by something called a match score, meaning the score from 0.0 to 1.0 of how correct an annotation is correlated to the species into a display list to which the modeler is able to then choose an annotation from. And now we will wait for the video snippet to loop back to the beginning for us to start our showcase of the feature. How this works is the modeler first selects the species that they want to insert an annotation for. In this example, we will use AL. When the modeler selects AL and then right clicks, it, a pop-up menu of different buttons is displayed. And we notice one named annotation recommender. The modeler then clicks on annotation recommender and a dropdown of recommended annotations will then be displayed. The annotations are listed from top all the way to the bottom in order of highest to lowest match score with the species. In this specific example, the modeler would choose the first recommended annotation, which has the highest match score or style. After the selection, the annotation is inserted at the bottom of the model as displayed. Another feature we developed is called automatic rate law insertion. When modeling, typing out rate laws for a reaction may be tedious. To combat this, we developed a feature to automatically insert modeler selected rate laws into the models. It simplifies the process of the modeler typing out correct rate laws, creating a more efficient way of modeling. And now we will wait for the video snippet to loop back to the beginning for our showcase. And while we wait, I want the audience to keep in mind any user usability recommendations that they would like to give back or any feedback that they have in mind and to possibly note that down for later discussion. And suppose the modeler has a newly typed reaction. We see that the reaction has a yellow underline warning the modeler that the reaction is missing a rate law. 
When the modeler right clicks on the line where this reaction was typed, a pop-up menu of different buttons appears with one button specifically labeled as insert rate law. After the modeler presses the insert rate law button, the filter drop-down list of valid rate laws relating to the reaction appears. Valid rate law meaning rate laws that correctly relate to the chemical reaction that the modeler wishes to insert a rate law for. In this specific example, the modeler would select reversible Hill model rate law by clicking on the reversible Hill model button. The rate law is inserted next to the reaction. The system then prompts the modeler to type out their own constants through subtle blue slash gray highlights as displayed on the placeholder constants VM, KEQ, KM1, KM2, and H. If a constant is undefined, a red squiggly underline is displayed as shown under the placeholder constants. Otherwise, the red squiggly line will not appear when the modeler types out a defined constant, for example, constant KF16. We can then see that the modeler can press the tab key on the keyboard each time to automatically move quickly through constants without needing to move their cursor to the next constant. The feature also supports editing multiple same constants at a time. We see this when the modeler tries to edit one of the two placeholder constants for KM1, KM2, and H. Both of the constants are edited at the same time. As we can see, when the modeler types in KF14, KF13, Okay, so one more feature that we implemented in VS Code Antimony is the import feature, which allows the modeler to import files that contain models to be used in the current file. To import an Antimony file, the modeler types the import keyword, then types the name of the file as shown here to import the file within the double quotes. With that, the file has now been imported into the current file. Furthermore, the modeler can then hover over the name of the file in the statement to get the hover display as we can see. This also works with SBML files as we can see here, where now the user enters an SBML file instead, but the hover also displays this in antimony format for more readable models within the file in the hover. So we could have a few, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Edith. Sorry. Um, I also wanted to reiterate about any feedback regarding user usability and any improvements to that as well. Thank you. Yeah, so, so our agenda is let's have a, a few feedbacks now if there are folks who you know, have specific questions about the environment you just that was just presented. And then WUSUB has some more detailed um, slides to talk about the Sorry. recommender. Joseph, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Oh, we could are, you go back yeah, you, one minute? You broke. <laughs> the, our internet broke for a second, so we didn't hear the end of uh, Eva's. Book. Okay, fine. Let me let me repeat just to give you a feeling for the agenda. So, um, so this is the conclusion of the VS Code antimony demo about the IDE, and uh, the team yeah. would be very. Can interested. you go back a few slides? Oh. Okay, uh, how far hard. back do you need to go? Uh, go back and we'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> okay. That, okay, that was it. At the end, it was just at, it was at the end of that slot. We okay, we so it, it, yeah. yeah. So so Lucian, just to be clear, so from here all the way through to questions, it broke. Leave it under yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave it, leave it under <laughs> Yes. Yeah. It, uh, you had. You got through most of the thing, and then as you were editing the end of the rate law with the, the multiple things editing at once, that was when it that was when it stopped. Okay, fine. So why don't we just start from here? We'll go. We'll we'll repeat from here to the end. I think you can do the next slide probably if you assuming you got the yeah. I would go from the next slide. I think you got the end of this one basically. Okay. Yeah. This is so. Okay. All right, Anish. Yeah. Okay, so so one more feature that we implemented in VS Code Antimony is the import feature, which allows a modeler to import files that contain models to be used in the current file. 
for this, the modeler just types the import keyword and then the name of the file that they want to import within the double quotes. And that imports a file into the current file. The user can also hover over the name of the file in the statement and that displays the file in a hover format in, a, in Antimony. This is also possible with SBML files, as you can see, where we just type the name of the SBML file within the double quotes and the hover displays this in Antimony as that's a more readable language. Thanks. All right, yeah, Eva, you wanna repeat your comments about the questions? Uh, yes, I just wanted to reiterate to still keep in mind any feedback or feature improvements that you all might have in mind for user usability and how to make it more intuitive for modelers to be able to use antimony for any of our new features. Thank you. So what we'd like to do now is, you know, spend a few, a couple of minutes if there are questions about the IDE um, or, um, you know, how the features might be better used or how people envision using them. But we do have another 10, 15 minutes or so in which uh, WUSUB is going to go into details about the recommender. And that was mentioned briefly as one of the new features, but uh, more technical detail will be presented. So, Lucien, could you moderate for us, see if there are questions at this point? Yes, sure. Yeah, go ahead, Andres. Uh, I, I have two questions. I don't know, maybe you want to repeat that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, question number one, I noticed that um, base units at the second or so were not highlighted. Uh, that is, uh, how, how they deal with base units? Uh, so, yeah, uh, the question is about uh, unit highlighting, um, like seconds or something. Do you highlight? You highlight the units, um, you highlight the unit creation and that sort of thing. I don't know if there are any units in your examples, but. So how do we handle units at this point? Um, I'm not sure, actually, I'm not sure exactly how units are handled. Do you know how the coloring works for that? How the highlighting? I think probably the keyword is, I don't know if that's separately highlighted. Okay, I apologize. So I, don't know that I, we I, I think I oh, can Steve, answer go that ahead. question. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. So um, all of these syntax highlighting are applied before parsing, uh, meaning that it only highlights certain keywords. So for example, compartment, that is a keyword that we recognize and highlight. So in terms of units, we do parse units, but we don't highlight units now. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I, I, I believe, I think, that, I think it makes sense to highlight the second Yeah. So, yeah, the, the suggestion then would be to like the more, if you could highlight at least the base units that we that you know about in the context in which units appear, that would be a feature request from Andreas. Like Great. Thank you. That that's good. Yeah. Good. Uh, we'll, we'll keep a note of that. And uh, we also have our GitHub repo uh, open for any uh, GitHub issues, requests. Okay, and, and the question also about um, errors or warnings. Mm -hmm. So there are some modeling techniques that don't require certain features. So like initial values of species are only necessary if you want to interpret the component for the settings or something, if you want to do FDA, don't need them. So um, in this case, uh, I don't know, maybe it makes sense to switch such things off, or is there a feature to switch such things off? We got so the, uh, the question is that in some contexts, your warnings and errors may be different, such as initialization of, of a reaction or something. If you have an FBA model, you don't want any reaction rate. That's the whole point is that you're figuring out the uh, estimations of the reaction rate. And the species levels too, right? Um, so are, are there ways currently to turn on or off um, uh, particular classes of warnings? And if not, that would be other feature requests. Yeah, as far yeah, as I so know, we, Steve, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we currently don't support turning off arrows and warnings, but 
suppressing warnings. That's something that we're thinking about doing in the near future. And, and particular classes of warnings also, like you wouldn't want to turn off all warnings necessarily, but, but you might be able to say- Yeah, exactly. So, so different kinds of warnings, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Any other comments, questions? So this thing, I want to buy a language and it seems pretty similar to it. I'm not sure how familiar you are. I'm wondering what are the uh, advantages and the disadvantages of Poland because for now it seems that or what are the implications for these other bilingual Sure. So, so the question is, uh, what's the difference between antimony language and the biometgen language? And I can answer that. Um, so the big thing is the biometgen has rules. It's rule based. So like, if you want to be rule based modeling, you should use biometgen. Um, if you don't need bio the rule based modeling, then you can use either, and they're probably pretty similar. Um, we are. What if they don't use rules? This is more. This yeah. If you don't use rules, this may be even simpler. So, um, the global simulation stuff is on that channel as well. Biometgen, yeah, but classifying simulation. Oh, there's a yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess so. The the simulation part would be if, if you're using biometgen, then that's maybe you need to use biometgen for that part. Um, biometgen, I believe, will import an SQL rule based model. Um, as of relatively recently, but and we are actually hoping to write a grant to expand antimony to do rule based things as well. Uh, so check back in a few years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 What is that about? Yeah. The other thing is, not is a software library. The idea is that you can be into any other application. Yeah. So that's the other thing. Yeah. So Antimony has its own Python package if you just want to use, if you just want to convert between Antimony and SQL, you can just uh, import. Uh, you can download it from PyPy. Um, it's useful in the Delorean context, but if you aren't using Delorean, you're using something else, you just want to convert things back and forth, you can do that in Python. Um, it, it is a library, um, it is a, it's a DLL or, or whatever, uh, if any other software wants to let their users create their models in, in text form, they should be able to use uh, uh, this plugin or use the library as a plugin to do that. There's also a new, uh, the bio UML group out of Russia, like took my specification for Antimony and wrote their own parser. Um, so it's kind of very impressed by it. Uh, so, it, so it has gotten some traction elsewhere as well for, for that. Yeah, but then I don't know how much, how much the file that has called that new UML like events, final world, what do you use? So the documentation uh, was in the small cases departments. Um, yeah, it's, uh, initially, I mentioned had no concept of the It's just, but it's all the time. But, um, I don't know about that. Michael's going to be here. Yeah, it's going to be Um, I mean, it's just like, why is there no But the first question, that maybe I maybe I missed it in the presentation. Do I have user defined functions that are similar to the observables in environmental? You can put a user defined function in here. I don't know what observables are, but just, I mean, just, I mean, we have to be one. like, okay, I have to speak to the receptor free and speak to the receptor valve, right? Mm -hmm. And I want an observable. It's like an assignment rule, but in my mention, it gets a bit more complicated because it has to figure out all the possible components that add up from the server. Oh, I think that's sort of rule based, yeah. rule specific, rule based specific. So if you wanted something like that uh, in SQL, I mean, at, at that level, your question is sort of an SQL question. Um, like, if you could, you are doing this all in SQL and you have things that you can 
if you can, if you could include it as in the final rule, then you can do it as you know, and therefore you can do it in the next one. Um, anything sort of rule based, you can put the same mass conservation on hand to make sure. Lots of tools, yeah. That's <laughs> one. Um, I think there's an FB, so the FBA or the FBC extension lets you put in the the like the the formula for your elements, and you can then do mass balance if you if you were to encode everything that way. If you can see the, the via simulation that you uh, put at your assignment to response to, mm -hmm. use constraints in that in the help. Yeah. Did anybody do that? Yeah. You actually can say that you want to constrain yeah. this constant and but they have only the tools to check in constraints that would make it good. Um and as far as antimony goes, antimony does support constraints and it actually supports uh FDA insurance also if you wanted to put those in there. Okay, you can write them like, right. checking. I don't no, know. Well, like, but like, right, I don't know. But but I know people are checking, I mean like the FBA rules. So then like the, the you can encode an FBA model using antimony and it'll translate it into SML with the FBA uh, extension. Uh, Lucian, maybe it makes sense to um hold off on more questions right now and let Wusub go ahead with the technical details of the recommender. Okay, well, we're going to let Herbert ask one question and then go on to Lucid. Okay, yeah. good. Um, well, there's two things. Um, what I noticed when you were hovering over S1, it said it was initialized to second. I think you mean zero, right? Oh, this particular one? Yeah. I mean, S1 is a concentration. Anyway. Oh, no, that, that's probably the edge of the. Oh, CL, oh it, yeah. It's out here. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part of, it's not part of the top box, even though it's like it. The other thing that I would like to put the default value then. Or what is the default value? I mean, that's, that's an all doesn't have any default value oh, yeah. to learn. Yeah. Um, that was interesting. Okay. Yeah. The, the other thing was I'm saving, saving what was just given up. I didn't see how you do, how you did that. So the question, did you hear the question? The question is, how do you save as SVML? Yeah, there's your converter. Oh, there's, uh, here's the converter. So just export to X, SVML and then select the location to save. And then it will automatically save as SVML file to the location. Okay. Uh... I didn't, it was, that particular thing is hard to see how to select, but yeah, I think you No, that's just selecting to make the SPML of saving it. No, it, it, it's another file, see? Uh, so so he converts to SPML, he like clicks five dot, I don't know what he's clicking there, but it, it's ended up as Right one, click so on anywhere. Oh, and then you save that separately? Like yeah. So there's you so you can't just save as SBML. You have to save, you have to convert it and then save that new file to SBML. Yeah. Is that the way? A quick save. So it's so another user request then is like save as SBML. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thanks. All right, Musa, we'll let you go. Uh okay. Uh, let me share my screen first. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is Usap. I'm working as a data science researcher uh, with the University of Auckland and the University of Washington. Uh, in this presentation, I'll yeah I'll discuss the details of the annotation recommender which is be, being developed as a Python package, which can be used as a standalone, standalone package or as a part of the uh, smart editor, which was just uh, discussed in the previous presentation. So the motivation of uh, developing VIX is that models, I mean, we, that we want like to understand what the models are and what the models do. In, in order to do that, annotations are really useful, but it's sometimes hard to annotate model elements. 
And if we look into the existing curated models closely, as in this bar plot, you can see many metal elements actually miss annotations. Um, you can see like species compartment model reaction elements are generally well annotated. These are the number of models with at least one annotation for each model element. Uh, but some, a couple hundred model, models miss annotation of reactions. If you look at kinetic law, like only 40 models have annotations. And even if, even when there are models with annotation, this is the proportion of annotated elements per model. For example, like this is the proportion of species annotated in each model. So this, these uh, histograms indicate that in the left-hand side, uh, 452 models have only partially annotated species out of total 898 models with at least one species annotation. Um, for reactions, about one third uh, of the models with annotation, they were only partially annotated and need more annotation for a uh, full understanding of them. So uh, yeah, and this is the intersection of them. Um, so 247 models actually have annotations for all species and all reactions. The others are missing at least some. Uh, we are developing yeah, uh, an algorithm and for metabolic models for now, uh, especially to annotate species and reactions using Chebi and Ria. Um, the reasons are because they're actively used and being updated. And yeah, for example, Chebi are pretty common for biomodel species. Ria is not really used a lot by biomodels, but it's, I think, be becoming more popular and being actively maintained. And they, it, they give some cross-referencing with other knowledge resources, such as CAG and EC number. So we are using it for our algorithm. The first step of um, annotating and recommending species annotations is, uh, yeah, is, is with the species and we are using edit distance. So let's say this is like one species with ID, SAM, display name with this long name. The algorithm actually finds a chebby terms that has with a synonym with the smallest edit distance. In this example, chebby 154414 has the exact same name as this display name of the species. So edit distance is zero, which is the minimum possible number, possible minimum number. So this uh, Chebby term is chosen as a candidate. There can be multiple candidates, but we can uh, we will sort it using match score. So the algorithm first chooses all possible candidates with the minimum edit distance, and then it sorts uh, the candidates using match score. This is the uh, current formula of match score. One minus minimum of one and edit this, uh, the normalized edit distance. So edit distance is divided by the length of the species, species name. So the, the number will range between zero and one. In this case, this long name like nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide reduced, it found the closest Chebby term with edit distance three, and as with this using this formula, you have the match score of 0.93, and it will sort the possible candidates using this match score. Uh, once the candidates are uh, candidate, the species annotations are chosen uh, or predicted. It proceeds to uh, predict reaction annotations using RIA. Um, RIA has this kind of information of reactions with a component species uh, with in, in Chebby terms, actually. So once, so this, this SAMDC is a reaction with, in, in a model with SAM and A, two species. The algorithm detects the matching species in the, Chebby, in the RIA database and finds a RIA term that includes the most number of predicted species that are given. The same way the match score of reactions are calculated. This formula is simpler than the previous one. 
It's a, just a number of matching species divided by the number of existing species in reaction database. So in this case, two species are given, both were found in this real term, but the real reaction actually had two more. So the existing real database, uh, RIA15994 has four species, two are matched, so match score is 0.5. In this way, we can also sort the uh, possible reaction identifiers. Um, so we, we, yeah, we apply this algorithm to buy models to evaluate and evaluate the algorithm and the models. Um, so each prediction can be evaluated and is considered correct if the candidate set includes the true value and you, and model level recall can be obtained by taking the average of them because there are multiple species and reactions for each model. In this case, um, the model has three species, uh, two are correct, one was incorrect. So the recall is two thirds. For, that, for reactions, two are incorrect, two are correct. So the uh, recall for reaction is 0.5. In this case, we calculated the model level recall for species and reaction and evaluated this, evaluated by models using this. Again, I'd like to note that we can evaluate predictions only if the model elements provide annotation. Uh, and we yeah, extracted the existing annotations in Chebby and for reactions, CAC and EC number and mapped them into RIA, evaluated them. And this is the result, the recall of for species and reactions in bio models. Um, the left-hand side is the result for species. There were only 306 bio models that provided um, Chebby term for species and 131 models uh, for reactions in check or EC number. And left-hand side, in both, both, in both plots, you can see they are like U-shaped. Some of them are really well predicted and some of them had not so good predictions. So I looked into them a bit more closely. There were some models with really um, species names that didn't really provide any information like S1, N1, A1. Because the algorithm uses edit distance, in this case, like no really reasonable species annotation can be predicted. For reactions, uh, it's um, the wrong reaction prediction, prediction of reaction annotations is uh, generally the result of incorrect prediction of species annotations. Especially, uh, this happens especially the crucial species were predicted incorrectly. Um, Bible 248 has ATP plus PCR going to ATP plus CR. ADP and ATP were correctly predicted by the algorithm, but CR and PCR, the modeler intended CR and PCR to be like phosphocreatine, but you can you know that CR is generally an abbreviation of chromium. So actually the algorithm predicted chromium instead. So it couldn't really predict a correct annotation of this reaction. Um, because recall was calculated, we also calculate the precisions. Uh, with the same set of data, we, yeah, we computed precisions by just um, using one divided by the number of candidates for each prediction. This could be possible because the minimum possible number of candidates is one. So you don't have to worry if it can be zero. And this is a result of precision for species and reactions for the same number of models. Uh, if precision is one, it means exactly one predicted candidate was uh, found. And then like 0.5 means like two candidates and 0.3, about three predicted candidates overall. This is like the average of uh, a model in, in a model. Uh, for reactions, you can see that compared to species, generally more predicted candidates or uh, in our by, yielded by our algorithm. This might be because generally uh, in bio models, uh, the users generally provide limited number of species per each model uh, for each reaction in the model. Mm. And this is uh, our extended algorithm workflow. 
some of them are still being developed. But first, the user will provide a model file or just a model. And this is actually optional in Smart Editor. But the first step is always uh, to predict species annotations using edit distance. And uh, there will be additional um, part that will compute credibility, which is another measure that is about the likelihood of the candidate set, including the true value. So if something is wrong with the prediction, it will uh, ask the user to update species name or just to ask uh, to decide to proceed without it. And the next step is to predict reaction annotations and possibly to iterate and improve annotations. This is another optional step. And it'll also, it, it'll then also compute the credibility score for reactions and also ask user if something is wrong and maybe ask the user to give feedback. And we can, it can also repeat this process. U user can decide whether to uh, repeat or not. And if not, it'll just display or save final results and it'll finish the process. Uh, this uh, package is currently called AMS SB Systems Biology. Uh, this uh, current version is to focus on species and reactions again. Version 1.0 is to be released in December. Uh, point 001 is now up on PyPy. So if you want to look into it, you can do it now. Uh, and all of part of the methods will be integrated with VS Code Antimony Smart Editor. We can also download it and use it uh, separately as a standalone package again. And this is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Any? is that if you have some annotations, um, you should be able to extrapolate from that to other annotations, um, like using the big database, right? So, uh, so the, the same thing used in a variety of, of uh, annotation uh, group packages, I guess. Um, have you done anything with, with that feasibility yet? Um, it's not implemented yet, but I'm actually thinking about using including that part as well. Uh, it stores a current, so when, when user loads a model to the uh, package, it actually stores the existing annotation. I'm, I'd be working on actually combining the predicted annotation and existing annotation and to predict something else based on it. Okay. Yeah. I actually had a question um, as far as integration into the VS Code antimony so far. Do you use both the IDs and the names in your predictions or just the IDs? Or in, in like in, does, in your separate tool also, does it use the IDs and the names or does it just the IDs? Oh, you can choose to uh, choose what, what, what you want to do. The, the current, uh, let me go back. So generally in most models, if display name is given, they tend to contain more information. So uh, the current algorithm by default uses display name if, if it's not like empty, but if display name is not given, it'll use ID. Uh, okay. By smart, in smart editor, you can also directly use a string. You can choose either. You can just directly feed this and get the result or use Sam instead. So there are options. Um, is there any way to use? So you don't use both right now. Uh, you, you use one or the other. No. You, uh, yeah, just one or the other. Okay. Do you know if again Visual VS Antimony uses the name if it's there? 
Sorry. Man, uh, did you hear my yeah. question? Do you, does anyone uh, well, actually? Does anyone else? Mm. We with Lucian, we can't hear you. <laughs> we just rejoined you, sorry. Uh, I don't know if you heard my question, but my question was, uh, do you, does anyone know if currently VS Code Antimony uses the uh, name or the ID or both in its annotation prediction scheme? Uh, both, if there is a name, we use the name. If, if not, we use the, uh, the ID. All right. Excellent. Thanks. What? Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, what question? How do you handle the um, um, the search of the the matches? Uh, do you build an index locally of um, all the synonyms, or do you query via ontology lookup service? Or how, how do you do the matching, and um, do you build an index or not? Um. You, you mean like how 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 I like detect the Chevy terms? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, how, yeah how, right. How do, how do you search the repository? Oh, I actually, uh, I have a downloaded version of Process Chebby Terms, like dictionary. It'll search through it in the algorithm. So right now there's, there's no, I mean, the, there's some performance optimizations that are still required. Right now there's no index structure. Nope. The question is, is the search basic string matching or is it something more sophisticated? It, for now, it's just, um, yeah, is, is it a question? Right. It's simple matching using its edit distance for now. It, it doesn't really use complicated matching scheme. So, so what the where most more sophistication comes in is actually in later steps of the algorithm what Wusub described, where there's this iteration where once you identify once you've got a, an edit distance that chooses um, annotations for species that, that allows you to match reactions and then based on what you find for those reactions, you can refine the species annotation so that's that feedback loop allows for um, improved accuracy. So is that incorporated into VS antimony as well? Like that, can you say like annotate my whole model in, in one fell swoop or is it, do I have to sort of go, and go species by species and annotate them individually? So, so right now, the only thing that's been implemented and, and by implemented, I mean, it was done for the purposes of demoing this capability. So it's not a solid feature yet. Ha has been um, the uh, edit distance matching for species. Okay, that that's the only thing that's actually been written into code. You know, you know, that more to come. So eventually, you will do the whole whole thing in one fell swoop, just like uh, Lucid's other tool does. Right, and the other idea was that with the um, being in the editor environment, it's possible to interact with the user. As as Wusub showed, one of the huge limitations here is the choice of using very uninformative names. And so, if the user can provide some better names, you know, suppose they used S one for glucose, well, that's not going to help me much. But if you tell me it's GLU or glucose. That could be helpful. And so the user can focus on maybe a few names that will be sort of the linchpin to doing a very thorough um, annotation. All right. And is this in the end? So I think if I had a model that is already built, I can see why you would do it with an algorithm. But if I just building my model and if I know what I'm doing, then I should know what I'm putting in, right? I should know yeah. what the action I'm going to do. Yeah. 
So if I do enter my reaction, I might probably have one of the databases that I choose to use uh -huh. uh, open on the side anyway. So is there a way to directly denote my um, my uh, my ID from a different database into while working within the entry Model. So the question is, if you know what you're annotating as you are building the model, can you just use that information? Um, and I just, I can say at least, I mean, the syntax in Antimony is relatively straightforward. You say like, Ugo's is quote your string, right? So if you have that string, you just type in something such is quote and paste it in and then you're done. Um, but if you want to use this interface, um, then I, I mean, but if you if you know your number, I guess you probably can. You, if you search something a database by the number, will it give you that particular uh, annotation string? Got a question for the other people on Zoom here. So um, I guess either Aldrich or Steve, in terms of the yeah. annotations searches. Can you repeat the question? So the question is, can I search by number? Like I know it is Unifrod 67. Can I just type 67 into the search and get the whole and say like, yes, it is Unifrod 67. Um, not that I know of. Do you, do you think it's possible, Steve? It is possible. It's just... Uh... So the use case is that you know the ID and you want to search for the annotation? Right, just because I want to quickly add the annotation in there without like figuring out the format of the URL, like heavy slash colon, whatever. Um, I, so, I know I have it up somewhere. I know it's 67 and I just want to sort of get the editor to give me the right format for the string. I, I've never tried that before, but I think there is an endpoint to use that. So if if that is a use case, then it's something that we can support. Okay. I, I, I noted that as a potential feature. Yeah. Is that basically what you want in that case? Or, or yeah. are, I'm, just, like... I'm just trying to figure out when, and in my case, I have a model which is fairly well in the right? Uh -huh. so, is it space? On the database, so mm -hmm. I have all the annotations that are provided by the MetaNet X, I think it's called the database I have in my own already. Right. But it might be that some metabolites don't have the annotation for some reason because the ID is ambiguous or whatever. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of a way to use it, but not like if I if like I don't know my. 700 reactions have thousands of metabolites to the other algorithm. I think it takes quite some time, right? Like it's a super fast. So I'm yeah. trying to think of a way to use it on such a model, not a model that's not at all like from scratch. Yeah. You can definitely help you in the refining of the metabolites. Yeah. The big advantage of mm -hmm. is that uh, all the reactions are on charge and mass balance. And so it could be that you um, put run mm -hmm. mutations on the species, but they are in the context of the reaction of mass and charge balance. Because you use the control population form of your model mm -hmm. and so on. And so the reaction on the circle might say you should probably use this species annotation. Because then, um, uh, in line with the they are information. I think this that would help to get all your information to provide us. Yeah, I'm just like I'm just thinking whether it would be possible that we need to go into the web case. Yeah, but that's not possible. Yeah, the, 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 the speed is interesting because yeah. certainly the more information you have, the easier, the more likely it is yeah. you're getting at the right explanation for the remaining ones right um so yeah i don't know I'm like certainly if you cache your indexes or if you're local you have local databases or something you can make this faster and i think in general the, the hope is to make this faster um as so i would say that that use case is definitely sort of in our our target um for what we would like to help you to do
Yeah. And, and just as a, a quick update, it, it turns out that um, you can search by ID and then get the URL, get the full annotation, annotation nice. string. Cool. Big problem is that all these um, ontologies are not fitting on tablets anymore. So if you go to oh, yeah. the ontologies and use NKIT and, uh, and uh, Go, and millions of terms, uh, and uh, suddenly this are. Uh, Gigabytes, terabytes of ontology data, and, and you yeah. want to download this stuff and you want to distribute it. And, uh, so, I mean, one idea is you have a lot of cash of the con of ones that you seem to make loads of kind of annotations and using it in cash as numbers. And you could download probably an old call metabolism, that would be big. Uh, so, so you can uh, yeah. imagine getting subsets of the whole database to go yeah. back more, and then if you can't find it there, then you, then you, you just flow uh, yeah. it for yeah. uh, uh, kernel. Yeah, you can use a lot of the taxonomies that you're not going down to all the big systems here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, question. How easy is it to allow us to go for other resources? Oh, okay. So, yeah, the question is how easy it is, is it to add new ontologies to the list, like Uniprot or Gene Ontology? Yeah, that you haven't used yet. So, Aldrich, you want to talk to that? Um. I don't really understand what the question is. About. Okay, so that the, the, the question was if there are additional databases to add. You know, how uh, easy is that to do? It, it is quite easy. Yeah. Like you you want support for more databases? That that's the idea, right? Or yeah, as people request new databases, how easy is it to add them in? Depends on which yeah, database. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you uh, have, I, I've forgotten the name of the, the package that you're using to access the repositories, but that you, you have a package which is fairly rich in terms like of that. Any, any specific databases in mind? Uh, Uniprot, Go, Genotologies. Can you spell that? I, I think we already, we already support we, these we libraries. We support yeah. these databases already. Those databases. I think. Yeah. So yeah, they're least a large Uniprod, number. Make sure less of what we have. At least for for Unipro, we're supporting it, and I think Genetology, we're also supporting it. Okay. I mean, I think that the the hard part is the um the access the protocols supported by the 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 databases. That's the harder part. Uh, yeah, that's sort of there's a package that takes care of most of that. But if, if the particular uh, database or ontology is not you know supported by that package, that protocol, then it's harder. There's uh, uh, the other databases that we support. Oh, that's the whole thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, follow up. Majority of the speakers in my novel presentation are doing that. Okay, and when you encode in the model scan with the gene signal, and then that we are actually have to associate the gene name with the data, and then that gives you able to map the gene signal and then the entire gene name. Okay, so you uh, so the, the comment is that at least in biomodels, most things are are annotated with Uniprod. Um, what is that? In small models. Are you small small models? Uh, I'm thinking not very difficult to do, but the small models are a bit more things to get in the database. And you brought somewhere. Okay. Well, you can use it sometimes, but not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Was that? 
Was that not one of the things we lose up with anything in particular, or is that something else? Or were you just saying part of the school? Yeah. 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 So when you so the oh you want to match the long the longer one is match the boat so for Musa's uh, thing that's it it just goes by end distance. So if you have a long species and it maps to a long species, that's that's the end of the world. Yeah. What Charlie's getting at is you also have to look at the fact that they have a species, for instance, they would need some kind of search for symptoms. For if you find one of the names within the genes symbol or something. Oh, okay. If you get one of the most search the other, so that you would. So, so the genes, the gene name is different from protein name, but right. the same thing in yes and all five places. So, okay. So you would need some sort of searching thing that could search both of them and whichever. Yeah. Oh, and search the different databases and pick the one that the match was closer to or, or, or like if you have sorted this with, with all of you. So, okay. so, yeah, I guess what my question then for Lusa. I don't know how much of that you heard, but um, some of the problem is that the names of the gene is different from the name of the protein. Uh, so, so like any, and you're not sure a priori which version a given modeler might be using. Um, so, can you search them sort of both at once and give a, a distance and, and like and pick the not only the particular thing in a database but within these two databases, which one would be the the better match? For now, it's using only the Chevy searchable ones. But okay. yeah, I, I, that, that's a limitation of it. Um, in future, it should be able to search for the other entities, uh, such as genes and proteins, complex proteins. That's one of the directions that we are thinking about. I mean, to be honest, we focus on metabolism because it, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. Like, so we which is relies on proteins, uh, how do we really get the proteins? I mean, I don't know if it's a good resource about the table, but protein is a lot of the I mean, what are you saying? No, 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 so like uh, the additional complexity, what did they mean a protein in the model and did they use the gene or was it really a gene? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I think, uh, is it true that all of the BS antimony annotation understanding is keyed on the is as opposed to the is encoded by or any of the other qualifiers in that form? That's my question to, I don't know, all your Steve people. Well, I'm not sure I totally get that. Um, I think that um, um, what the way it works right now, I mean, there's there's the type information in terms of searching the databases, but I'm not too sure. I, I'm not sure I follow the question exactly. This so I, I, you can annotate things in different ways. You can say uh, S, S1 is glucose, or you can say S1, S1 uh, or S5 is encoded by this gene because S1, S5 is a protein, but it's encoded by. A oh, okay, I get you. I think, Husab, is it correct that at, at this sure. point, um, when you're doing the um, the match for the reactions, are you just using the species annotations that you've inferred by edit distance, or do you also use annotations that are present in the model? Uh, that have previously been annotated. Wait, wasn't the question about like BQ bio qualifier thing? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a BQ qualifier, right? That's the question. Oh, okay, I misunderstood. So I, I think it's I, I I think the current version is about BQ bio is right. 
it doesn't really allow additional like bio qualifiers in annotations and smart editor. We don't just bulk from anyway. I mean, so, uh, so I can say Antimony supports any generic uh, thing. You can just write whatever you want. Um, the editors are going to take a little bit of time to catch up with all the capabilities. Because it's easy enough to just write a parser, right, that understands things enough that the info is. But yeah. Did we all answer all your questions enough? I think we can. Okay. Can we just stop the problem? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thank you all. Um, do you want to? All right. Yeah, we are done. Okay. Well, Lucian, um, thank you, wanna, you so much. Do you guys want to hang up for the wrap up session or not? Oh, oh. So the wrap up oh, is for. for anyway. I'm sorry. The wrap up is what for the uh, a series of breakouts. This is the last breakout of the day, right? Hello. I don't think he was talking to us. I think he hung up on us. I think he was talking to someone else. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. This was really awesome. Uh, it's not easy to participate remotely like this, and to and also to field questions. I, I think this came across amazingly well. So. Thanks. I've I've got some notes that I can distribute, and we can. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it into the Slack. So. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Here, bye. Bye. bye.